And we're back with another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's the Lakers Snack Pack, everyone. It's Gerald Glass. We're coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, but we cover the latest news and trends in pop culture each and every week, twice a week, wherever you get your podcasts. On our latest episode headed for this weekend, it's WrestleMania weekend, and we preview it. Myself and my good friend, Mr. John Orlando and the State of Pro Wrestling. So go ahead and check it out. Going to be debuting about a couple hours or so right there for you at the Pop Culture Cosmos. Inside Sports Fantasy Football, Joe Soros right next to me. He is the man behind Ox1947 at LakersBall.com. Plus, go ahead and check him out today at Simblades, his company, Simblades with a Y.com. Our good friends, starting with Daniel Berry Sports Highlights. Yo, go ahead and make sure you support him and support our good friends, the Lakerholics crew of JV Sweet. And Laker Tom at Lakerholics.com. John Costa, Lakers Corner and Clutch Talk. Stone Hansen Report underscore court on Twitter. Also as well, John McCallion, of course, Empire Jeff TV, Lakers and Five, our whole entire group of people that support us. We would like you to support as well. And speaking of supporting, please like and subscribe today and follow us on Facebook to get the latest notifications on when we go live on the air with the latest. Lakers Fast Break Podcast, and also a big special shout out to Search and Destroy, the best moderator in Lakers basketball, is right here with us right now at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Well, the Lakers, with five games left in the game on Saturday against the Cleveland Cavaliers, looking like uh, they will be making some sort of arrangements for the postseason, but what will they be? As the plot thickens with the loss at MSG tonight by the Sacramento Kings, they, the Lakers, inch ever closer to the Sacramento Kings in the Western Conference standings. Plus, in the rearview mirror, the Lakers have got to keep winning because right behind them, the Golden State Warriors have won six in a row, and they finally have eradicated themselves of the pesky Houston Rockets with the victory tonight. It's pretty much all but assured them at least 10th place in the Western Conference. But here today to go ahead and discuss all the scenarios of what the Lakers can and cannot do is a good man indeed. He is the man behind Ox IT47. Of course, you know him also as well as Johnny Blade, also Joe Soro out there for the Joe Soro 5 on Twitter. It is, of course, Joe Soro, Mr. Simblades. Joe oh, LFB. It's Joe Soro LFB now. Joe Soro LFB on Twitter. It is himself, Joe Soro. Joe, great to have you here. The plot thickens, my friend. Yes, the Lakers do not own the tiebreaker against Sacramento, but with five games left, it's getting a little closer. It's getting a little closer for eighth place in the Western Conference. The Knicks, actually, the Kings had that game in hand for a minute there, and then all of a sudden I remember eating dinner. Looking back on the game, I was at a restaurant, and all of a sudden the Knicks were up. I was actually surprised at how that turned out. The Lakers now are one game behind the Kings in the loss column. And this thing could get interesting, but the Lakers still have to win out for this to get really interesting. Yeah, If they lose one game, this thing goes south pretty quick. Uh, because they don't own the tiebreaker against the Kings, they they almost have to make up three games after or two and a half games after tonight to get that to get ahead of the Kings. And then the Pelicans, there's some control there because they do play the Pelicans in the last game of the year, and Phoenix does have a difficult run according to their schedule, even though they're still winning. There could be a chance. There could be a chance at a six if a few things fall their way and they win out. But if they win out, I feel pretty confident here that they're going to get a one-game chance in the play-in, which means either eight or a seven. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. The dangerous part about this, though, is we don't – the Lake. No one knows if the Lakers are going to end up playing Denver or Minnesota or Oklahoma City. That's going to be an interesting end. (laughs) 
I feel comfortable playing Minnesota. I feel comfortable playing Oklahoma in the minute in the, the first series, but Denver is going to be a problem if the Lakers end up playing them. Well, let's go ahead at, by each team that's affecting the Lakers. Let's go ahead as far as the rest of their schedule is concerned, because I think it's now to the point, Joe, that we can go ahead and start rounding off these schedules and looking at them in a little bit more closer detail. We'll start off with the Lakers themselves, starting off with Saturday's game against Cleveland. It is a tough back-to-back. How they get through this upcoming weekend, I think, could really detail exactly how far they will go or how far they can move up in the Western Conference because they have Cleveland on Saturday afternoon, then Sunday evening, Joe, Minnesota. We don't know what's going on with Minnesota at that point in time. I'm assuming they'll still be fighting for first place in the Western Conference, so they probably will have all their players or whoever's available to go ahead and be able to play for that one. On Tuesday next week, it is at... Uh, is against Golden State at home in the crypt. So another key game. That one, but again, Joe, with that one, you will solidify ninth place in the Western Conference with the victory, I believe, over Golden State, if that's the case. Then Friday of next week, they're at Memphis. And then Sunday, April the 14th, is at New Orleans. It is not out of the realm of possibility they could go 5-0, and but the next, this weekend will surely be the test. Yes, I. Uh, they're going to play. They're going to play every every team that they're playing, other than Memphis, has a reason to play, and they're going to have to match that intensity, that need to win. I'm I'm focused on the Lakers winning at this point. I'm not really paying attention too much to the other teams because the Lakers have no margin of error the rest of the way. They have to win all five games for them really to get themselves in that, at the very least, the one game playing instead of the two. If they lose one game, I don't see them getting out of the nine. I think nine is pretty pretty safe at this point, because I do believe they're going to win four out of the five comfortably. Uh, but that one game loss would, would cost them probably a, a, a seven or eight. Uh, some miracles would have to happen for them to jump over the seven and eight. I'm not even thinking about that, but there is a chance, obviously. But the way they, they the way they've been playing, the urgency they have, uh, I don't see any reason why they couldn't. They they went five and one on a road trip. Granted, the competition was suspect. They still went on the road this late in the year and showed a lot of determination, a lot of moxie to. Come back five and one, which was not a record I thought they could do this late. This at, at this point, with all the the wear and tear of the year. But let's look just for giggles. Let's look at the rest of the teams surrounding the Lakers at the rest of their schedules. Just just make sure everybody knows and exactly is what's up to date as far as their schedules concerned. Let's start with Golden State, the team directly behind the Lakers. They're currently a game and a half behind the Lakers, but they have been winners of six in a row. So they are, I believe, the hottest team right now in the league. So we got to go ahead and take at least a look at that. Their game next is at Dallas. That's going to be a tough one, Joe. Sunday, that's on Friday. Sunday is at home against Utah. That's going to be a gimme for them. So that's, I think they're going one-on-one right there. Then at the Lakers, as we talked about on Tuesday, we're assuming they're going to lose to the Lakers, so that's going to be one and two. Although, again, that's going to be a tough game. Got Portland at Portland. That's going to be a win for them. So let's say two and two. Then, you, then you've got them hosting New Orleans and hosting Utah one more time. So they could easily go four and two in that stretch, Joe, from what I'm seeing. Yeah, they could. They, they have a, an all-time great still playing at the top of his game. There's championship experience still on the team, even though the, the other two pillars are are not as good as they used to be. I can see, I can see Golden State. I think they're going to lose this time in the, in Dallas. They did beat them a few nights ago, but I think Mavericks take this one, and then they'll play the Jazz. I believe they'll they will win that 
the Lakers game is kind of a pick em game in a lot of ways. You never know. And then they'll play tra the Trailblazers, the Pelicans, and the Jazz. And that's that's where I think the, the Lakers really can control their their fate here because that game Pelicans, against New Orleans could really be big if New Orleans continues to continues its slide, Joe. If they lose if the Lakers have to win all five of the remaining games, if they do that, I have no doubt that they will they will jump the Pelicans. Well, let's talk about least. this. Well, let's talk about least. this at the very least. Okay. Well, let's talk about the Sacramento Kings, my friend. Their schedule doesn't look so great. Friday at Boston. Uh, if Boston starts sitting down, guys, that could be different. But for right now, let's just go with an 0-1 right there. At Brooklyn, well, we saw what happened to Brooklyn, so that could be 1-1. At Oklahoma City, now lately, I don't know if SGA is going to be in or out of the lineup, so that all depends if Oklahoma City is still making a charge for number one in the Western Conference. So I'm going to say right now, two and uh, one and two. Let's go with New Orleans after that. This is where it gets uh, interesting. They host New Orleans, they host Phoenix, and then they host Portland. So I see possibly... Three and three in that scenario is what I'm thinking, Joe. What are you thinking of Sacramento? Case? So Sacramento really crapped the bed tonight. Mm -hmm. They should have won this game. They were ahead, and then they just kind of fell apart there in the third. If they lose tomorrow, things can get very, very interesting. Uh, because now, if the Lakers win on Saturday – they're going to be looking at a an even loss column record with 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 the Lakers. So that means but they're going to they'll still have the tiebreaker on the Lakers. But correct, yeah. correct. But this is again why it's important that the Lakers, and I'm sure they they know and they understand they they control their fate, and the competition is going to eat itself because of the fact that most of the teams that they're playing against or trying to get ahead of or try to keep at bay are playing each other. And that's that's the key here. There's, it's really really interesting. I, you know, we sit here and we complain <laughs> complain about the play in, but the play in has created drama. LeBron has complained about the play in, the, the Le, and no one has benefited from the play in more than LeBron James, <laughs> which, which, you know. which which goes to, which totally goes. With, and I I agree with him too. See, that's the thing is I agree that the play in is. It cheapens the the re regular season to, to some degree, but I guess it doesn't because look at look at what we're doing. It's creating content. It's let's, creating. Let's, let's look at the standings. Yeah, let's look at the standings. If there isn't a play-in, we are looking at. I think it still is. It would still be exciting because the Lakers right now would be a game out of that final playoff spot, so there'd be some some drama there, and then the Golden State Warriors would be would be uh, kind of right behind them for the league ideally what they would ideally what the league would want right now is they would want either la or golden state to get one of the slots where they don't play each other and then they win their what they need to win to get into the playoffs mm -hmm. that's with all due respect to the Pelicans, I know they have uh, Zion. I know they want to market Zion. I know the King, well, the Kings, uh, you know, DeAndre Fox is not really a, a national type kind of draw. But I feel pretty comfortable that the NBA would prefer to have the Lakers and the Golden State Warriors at seven and eight, at the very least. Yeah. Because now, now you have, let's just say the Lakers get the seven and the Golden State Warriors end up getting the eight. Now you have first round matchups with either Minnesota, Denver, Oklahoma City that can can carry some some ratings there for the NBA in the first round. And of course if they end up winning those, here's here's where I think that the here's where I think the league would really like. They would love this. They would love for Minnesota and Oklahoma City to get the one and two seed. Lakers and the Warriors get the seven and eight. And then the Lakers and the Warriors take out the Wolves and the Thunder. That's what I believe they're if they had a choice, I believe that's what 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 would be the exciting uh scenario. And then 
And then let's say should that play out the way it does, uh, I guess Clippers, Mavericks playing in the first round, that's kind of a, do you want Luka? Do you want a possible LA, LA later? I don't know how that would play out. I think Luka is probably more of a draw than than LA versus LA. But it, 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 it it's definitely going to create a buzz that, that I think the league and I think people in general would want to want to, want to be a part of. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It's a snack pack, everyone. It's Joe Soro along with me, Gerald Glassford. Thanks again for watching this. I truly appreciate it. We're talking about the different possible scenarios for the Lakers and where they might stand at the Western Conference. Now that pretty much after today's game between the Houston Rockets and the Golden State Warriors, won by the Golden State Warriors, pretty much solidified the top 10 teams in the Western Conference. So with that said, again, I thought the Sacramento Kings look according to the schedule. I mean, if you're a betting individual, I would probably say three and three for their last six games. Let's go to New Orleans, take a look at them next on their schedule to see what they have remaining for the rest of this season. And as I scroll down to it, their next game on Friday is an easy one, Joe. Well, we normally you would say it's an easy one, although Victor Wembyama is playing really – he's playing like – he's playing at another level than most basketball players are at this point in time. He's playing sensationally. So the New Orleans Pelicans are hosting San Antonio, but then on Sunday they're at Phoenix. Tuesday they're at Portland. Thursday they're at Sacramento. Friday at Golden State, I see three of four possible losses there. And then Sunday, April 14th, they're at home versus the Lakers. So this is a possible scenario if the Lakers really apply themselves, Joe, especially in that last game, New Orleans could be the most likely candidate to fall even harder and the possibility of winning going two and four in that stretch. I see the very good possibility of two and four or three and three on that. And they were they were hot for a while there, and that's that's how quickly you can turn. Dallas went from what eight to to, to five to man, I, I bet they were they were really, in fourth. At, for I bet Dallas was cursing up a storm tonight against with the with the Nuggets. They they probably thought for sure. Without Kawhi, the Nuggets take take the Clippers out because had they had the Nuggets beaten the Clippers tonight, they would have been one game behind the Clippers for the fourth seed, which would I, I think am I, I I haven't had a chance to look at the the season record. Would the Mavericks win the uh, tiebreaker on that one if they if they would tie between who and who between Dallas and the LA Clippers? Um, I think the Clippers do own the tiebreaker. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that, then they would have Frank, to skip. You, please correct me if I'm wrong. Oh no, he says no. They that the Mavericks would win. Okay, the so so now look how Thank that you, changed. Frank. There's so much. There's so much. Uh, there's so much flip flopping between that four and nine area. Heck, you can say four to ten at this point, even with. With, with Golden State being a game behind the Lakers in the loss column, it, it's just that's what the that's it, that's what the West has become this last two years is you're you're separated by six games between the fourth seed and the sixth seed in term in the loss column. It's pretty nuts. Four four actually, yeah, six. Well, get and, this, my friend. What? Yeah. Okay, could finish up, and I wanted to go ahead. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's it's very difficult to kind of gauge what might happen here. It's very difficult. The easiest thing to do is to say that the Lakers need to win out, and they're very likely. If the Lakers win out and you look at the remaining schedules for Sacramento, New Orleans, Phoenix, you're probably looking at the Lakers getting to the seven in, in some ways too. For sure the eight, but there's a strong possibility they get the, they get the seven uh, and maybe even possibly a six if – Phoenix can lose a couple games as well. Well, let's take a look at Phoenix. Remember we talked about a week ago about them statistically having one of the hardest schedules to the close of a season that any team has had in NBA history. But you know what? I, I got to give them credit, Joe. They have really turned it up. I mean, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, that one-two punch has won them the games. They've won three out of five. They've actually won six out of 
eight is uh so they've actually gotten it done uh in many ways but their schedule is they're hosting minnesota they're hosting new orleans both key games the western conference on friday and sunday then a home and home against the clippers on tuesday and wednesday get to that joe the end of the season you're doing a back-to-back games against the clippers at phoenix and then at la that's crazy and then friday of next week a week from friday you're at sacramento and then sunday you close out your season on april the 14th against you're on the road at minnesota uh, i don't know what to say joe because normally that looks like a, a one and five one and five two and four scenario but the way phoenix has been playing who knows because you got booker playing at another level 40 to 50 points a game almost every time now Everyone's going to be playing very, very. Their their attention's going to be there. That's that's the only issue right now. Just like the Golden State Warriors, they're playing to win now. They have to win, otherwise, they can't afford to not be in the playoffs. Oh, by the way, the Clippers do own the tiebreaker. Frank made a correction. Okay, like that, okay, so. good. Okay, so thank the, you, Frank. And Frank. The, this is playing out. Uh, this is playing out. In, in no consistent way. It just, I, th- th- there's nothing that we can predict that we would kind of veer off into, oh, this is probably what's going to happen. I, I, honest to God, don't have a clue. I had no idea that the Mavericks would get to the five in such a s- short span. The New Orleans Hornets didn't know that they were going to fall as hard as they did. Sacramento Kings, next, one day I'm hearing, where does, where, 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 is it Huerta? Huerta. Huerta. I can always, Get tongue tied on that one. Huerta's out. Then the next day, Malik Monk is out. Like what? <laughs> like oh, Herder, Kevin Herder, I'm Herder. Sorry. Jesus, Herder, I Herder. keep keep thinking I of Huerta. Yeah. Th- 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 yeah, thinking Herder. someone else. Sorry, what? Sorry, Herder. 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 Uh, I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not expecting these these kind of things going on. And then all of a sudden they come, and then you start changing your mind. What's next? What's going to happen tomorrow? You know, what's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but. What 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 I would be saying to the team is, guys, win the next five games, and you're probably sitting at the seven or six, possibly. So let me ask you this: I mean, Phoenix is the wild card in all this, in this whole situation between, uh, and uh, maybe Frank will agree with me from the Clippers in fourth to Golden State in tenth. Of any team, right now, based on their schedule. Phoenix is the absolute wild card in this scenario based on the way they're playing and the schedule they got left. Looking at it, Joe, I'm going to say they're going to go three and three. But with the way Booker's been playing and the way they've been playing, they could easily go five and one. They can also, with the way that their defense has failed them this year, they could also go one and five because that schedule looks really tough, Joe. What are you thinking? Again, I'm gonna try to focus on the Lakers here. I understand, the, but we're yeah, taking. I can't. I can't. No, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna get into it. I cannot focus on anything else at this point. We, the Lakers, win the next five games. I'm gonna say that they're gonna get a seven or a six seed. I mean, all all the other teams would have to win out, but it's not possible, right? Sometimes they're playing against each other. So the Lakers win the next five games. I'm gonna say right now that they're gonna get a seven or a six seed. Okay. That's where I'm at on that. Want to go ahead and touch on a couple more teams for the rest of the Western Conference. And it is Frank's team up next, uh, the Dallas Mavericks in fifth place in the Western Conference. We just touched on the sixth place team in the Western Conference, the Phoenix Suns. Now we're going to touch on the fifth place team in the Dallas Mavericks. Again, uh, as he noted, uh, they do not own the tiebreaker against the Clippers. And I believe they're two games back as of right now in the Western Conference standings. Uh, Yes, they are. So that is a very tall task with six games left for them. Uh, But as Frank knows their schedule already, Friday, they're hosting Golden State. Sunday, they're hosting Houston. I don't know. I think Houston might get ready to pack it in because of what happened against Golden State earlier today. Then they're at Charlotte, at Miami, versus Detroit at home, and then at Oklahoma City. That's a four and two record. I'm thinking Frank at the very least, I think that's four and two for them. So that should solidify their at least fifth place for them. 
I don't know. Asking for fourth place is going to be a lot to ask at this point. Fourth? Well, I... Because there are two games back behind yeah, the, but, you know, with you, the with and they don't own the tiebreaker. Okay, so they don't own the tiebreaker tonight. Yeah, that's I, I was I would say Dallas was upset real a lot tonight. But what if what if the Clippers lose to Cleveland and to the Suns twice? Now what? That's a different scenario. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 a lot of things can happen here. It is it, it is going to be exciting for the NBA the NBA viewer what's at stake for the NBA in general. And I know that the NBA wants the Clipper, I'm sorry, the Warriors and the Lakers in the playoffs. I'm going to predict, I I have to wait till that materializes before I kind of have an idea on how that's going to play. If the Lakers stay at the nine and Golden State stay at the, at the 10, obviously one of those guys is going to be out. But I think, I really think the Lakers are going to jump the, 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 the nine and get to the seven or eight at some point. I want to go ahead and touch on the last team in this whole scenario between four and 10. It is the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, tomorrow they play, they play host to Utah. That should be a victory. Sunday they play host to Cleveland. Cleveland will come off. This is a back-to-back for Cleveland because remember they played the Lakers 24 hours earlier on Saturday. So who knows what's going to go on then. Then they do, like I talked about when we were talking about Phoenix, they play a home and home back-to-back against Phoenix. So let's just say they split for all intents and purposes. But again, without Kawhi, you never know. Then they host Utah, and then they host Houston. I'm going to say three and three, which will keep them in fourth place. If if they go three and three, Joe – I see them still uh, keeping fourth place in in the Western Conference. <laughs> I don't think the Mavs will have enough to get by them in order if they go three and three. Because no you got comment. so many teams. No comments. Because no you got comment. so many. Because you only have so many teams that are playing for something right now. Even at the top of the Western Conference, there's no teams that really should be relaxing their players. SGA in Oklahoma City, they you know, he's been rested the past few games or at least a good percentage of them and it's cost Oklahoma City. They still have a chance to move up. Yeah, there's no scenario between 1 and 10 where teams should be resting their players right now in the Western Conference. You know what was funny today? What's that? Uh, it was funny that uh, Houston was talking about how Warriors come out and play, and then they got their ass whooped. Yep, that was funny today to me. Pretty, pretty creative. I don't mind it. I like stuff like that. But if you're gonna do that, you gotta come with it too, and you gotta win that thing. And essentially, the Warriors knocked out the Rockets tonight. It's not official, but it, it might. It, it really is. Now they're three games. Yeah, behind. and they don't have a type. Then they the Warriors have the tiebreaker. So I thought that was a really good sequence today. I thought that was a real good sequence. I thought that was entertaining. A little different than what I was used to. Frank, OKC is only a game out in the Western Conference. I don't know if I would rest my guys if that's the case. If you can still eke out a possibility of going ahead and getting the top spot in the Western Conference, I would I would go all out, Joe. What, what would you say? If you're oh, no, there's Denver... No doubt. I, there's no doubt. You you have to... You Looking at it from Minnesota's standpoint, you're winning. You have a chance to get in the one seed without Carl Anthony Towns. But then again, what is your reward? Especially if he's not there in the first round. Well, Frank's saying that, well, yeah, but why fright for the first seed? home court advantage throughout the, at least the Western conference playoffs, which might be the, uh, the difference. Oh, no, no, no. It's very important. Absolutely important. Because if you win the next two rounds as a one seed, that means you don't have to travel to Denver in the Western conference finals. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. That, that, uh, that's not, that's not, uh, there's no way Oklahoma city, or Minnesota is thinking of anything other than trying to get that one seed. You get that one seed, you got to avoid the first two games in Denver if you have a shot at doing that. So I don't, I, I in no way believe 
that they're that, that you shouldn't be playing for that. If you're scared to play the Golden State Warriors or the Lakers in the first round, that's a different story. Uh, I wouldn't be afraid of the Warriors. I'd be you can't get cute, them. Joe. You can't really get cute. No, to try no, to you think have to. You know, we talked about this winning, losing, and winning. There's a there's a there's a conditioning that is created, just like when you go to the gym, just like when you get up in the morning uh, uh, at a consistent time, just like when you do things regularly and in and, and, and routine. When you start to think, ooh, I'm going to do this, when you're used to doing something else, you're going to really cost yourself in the end. It's not like coasting. I'm not talking about kind of playing it, you know, taking your foot off the, the gas pedal. No, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about we're going to try to lose or we're not going to try to win put all our might to try to get the first seed so that we can avoid something or we don't want to get hurt. If you, if you're constantly going to worry about getting hurt, you're, you're playing with fire. You're, 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 you're going to end up getting hurt or you're going to end up costing yourself a, a better position wherever you're at. The, the, the Timberwolves and Oklahoma city thunder, it's imperative for them to get that one seed, at least to give themselves a chance to start every series. Should they advance at home, the first two games, it helps in the NBA. It's very, it's as important in the NBA as in any other sport. Football used to be sort of like that, but lately football's been kind of dwindling. A lot of teams went on the road. Uh, the hockey, not so much. It doesn't matter hockey. And it definitely doesn't matter in baseball anymore. So in the NBA, it's it's the most important in my, in my, in my viewing life that home court does matter more in that sport than any other sport. And if you're as young, if you're as young as Oklahoma City is and as about to kind of maybe go up a level as Minnesota is here with all the talent you've drafted and accumulated, you got to go after that, that thing. And you, you end up facing Denver, man. It's going to be a hell of a lot easier not starting in high altitude those first two games. So, yes, I, I am – I, I, I would like to think that Oklahoma City and Minnesota are going to play very hard to get that one seed. I'm just going to say the next week. I know Robert was saying about the. I'm going to give it the next week. Everybody's going to put out their all unless there's some nagging injury. They're going to put out their all and put out their players on the court for the next week. Whether or not you want to go ahead and get cute, I don't think you'll start seeing that until the last two or three games of the season. From sure, some, of the, of, some of these teams. You, you, keep, think, you keep saying, I, thinking. I'm, I, I don't want to think anymore. <laughs> okay, you don't want to think. Just... I don't want to think anymore. I'm done thinking. We, we've thought all year. Is the Lake, are the Lakers really serious? Are they going to think? No, not the they're... Lakers, but I'm talking about the teams at the, at the uh, it, top it's of the so, list. It's so, there's so many scenarios. This is like shuffling the cards at this point. There's so many scenarios. You just don't know. Look what happened tonight. New York was getting their butts whooped. All of a sudden, it I literally, I turned around like this at the restaurant. And I'm like, Jesus, is any of these guys above us going to lose? And all of a sudden, within like 10 minutes, I turned back just to look at the score. And all of a sudden, the Knicks were down 10. I'm sorry. The Kings were down 10. And Dallas goes on this seven-game winning streak. And... I'm watching Denver and the Clips, and I'm going, how are the Clips winning this game? Well, Kawhi's sitting down. You know, Jokic just had his 140 billion freaking uh, triple-double. He's hitting shots out his rear end like he always does. I'm going, like, what's going on here? So I'm done. Like, after tonight's game, watching the, the Clippers, the last half of the Clipper-Denver game, I'm like, what, what is going on here? Like, do the, do the Denver Nuggets want to win this thing? Do... Are the Clippers really this good without Kawhi? Like, what is going on here? I don't know. That's why I'm just like, Lakers, win the next five games. Win the next five games, and it looks like you are going to get a shot at at least avoiding a two-game plan. I feel like I'm Joe right now. I feel I just ripped the heart out of Sharky Eisenhower. I just had to inform him that the Lakers waved Dylan Windler a month ago, actually about a month and two days ago. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Sharky. I know you were the Dylan Windler fan out there, but 
unfortunately, the Lakers are not Dylan Windler fans anymore. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I didn't know that date he got waived. I don't. I didn't remember. I, it, I just looked it up on ESPN. It was. My, I knew it happened. Uh, I just. I just got to get the exact date. So yeah, it was unfortunately March the, March the second. So that what they got instead was Harry Giles the third, and I'm just gonna say Sharky. Dylan Windler is a better option than Harry Giles the third. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Harry Giles is awful at this stage of his career. I feel bad saying that, but you know what? It is the truth. He's just terrible in his uh, game against uh, Brooklyn. So we'll see what happens from there. But it is, of course, the Lakers fast break. Truly appreciate you joining us. What are the various Lakers scenarios? I mean, we've tried to go ahead and describe them out there. And, of course, Joe is seriously focused on the Lakers and Lakers primarily as we get into the Western Conference. The Eastern Conference, that's still – it's still a little bit more set. I think a lot of people – there's still some jockeying for position anywhere from two to six that can still be made. And after that, anywhere from six to eight – and then, of course, 9 and 10 are still jockeying for positions themselves. But really, does it matter? Does anyone really stand a chance, even with them beat back, Joe, against the Boston Celtics? The, I'm sorry, Embiid coming back? What? And be, even with Embiid coming back for Philadelphia like he did the other day, do you see any team in the Eastern Conference standing at Oh, uh, I would say maybe the Bucks could get themselves together a little bit at the right time and be a threat. Cleveland might be a little too young. The Knicks might've had a chance. I think if Randall, I know Randall's kind of a hit and miss, but having him there is still going to help you than not. He's out uh, for the year. Yep. The, the, the reality of, of the Eastern conference is, is very similar to the reality of this next five game stretch in the, in the Western conference. I can sit here and say, Oh yeah. And Oh, here. And, Yes, when in fact, I'm not going to get tricked again like I did last year. I was forced. I was, I mean, 100% that, and this is this was going against my prediction in the offseason. I had predicted the Miami Heat and the Denver Nuggets to be in the finals. The only difference is I had Miami beating Denver. But I thought, oh, Milwaukee's probably going to go all the way here. And they got waxed. They got waxed by a play-in that played two games. Not only a play-in team, but a team that had to win two games to get in. And then that team took the Boston Celtics to a 3-0 lead and then almost blew it, winning in seven, and pretty much cementing any chance of them being competitive in the finals after that. I wonder a lot if if they had swept the, the Celtics in that series. That, that they had maybe had a better chance of being Denver. Probably not. But just think about that for a second, though. You had the Boston Celtics, a seasoned team, team that had been together for a long time, three down 3-0 against an, a 9-10 seed, really. I don't trust, I don't trust Boston. I don't trust anybody in the East. But the chips are laying down nice for Boston to win it all. It's laying down nice. It's definitely laying nice for them to get there. Now, as Laker fans, we're in a situation where do we – what is the the backup plan if the Lakers don't get to the finals to beat the Celtics, which is what we have been waiting on for four or five years now? Well, our only shot at making sure that those guys don't win is probably Denver. We'll see, my friend, but it is uh, the Lakers as we head into Saturday's game, Saturday afternoon. Please join us, playback.tv slash Lakers Fast Break. Also as well, it's simulcasted to YouTube and Facebook. It's not the game video, unfortunately, but it is our beautiful faces and logos, plus also the chat that's out there on playback.tv slash Lakers Fast Break. We have a lot of fun on playback. Stone Hansen a.k.a. report underscore court on Twitter. He is back on Twitter, but he also joins us. Laker Nick, great part and a great addition to our team on Playback as well. So go ahead and check out what we're doing each and every time out, each and every game out on Playback. That'll be on Saturday 
at 12.30 against the Cavs. But before we head out, my friend, I want to go ahead and spend a moment, if we can, or two, talking about the Lakers and also about Jerry West, who we've only touched on on playback and on this show just a little bit this week, or actually officially, but the report's already... If the, if the cat's already out of the bag, Joe, why don't they just go ahead and say it right away? Jerry West is being inducted for the third time, the only individual ever to the Naismith's Basketball Hall of Fame, this time as an executive, as a contributor to the league. And I think it's very well-deserved. It's overdue, and I think it's very much well-deserved. What took him so long? Exactly. Exactly. J- it, Jerry West, in my book, is the greatest executive, exec, the greatest player executive. Because I know there's a difference between general manager and mm-hmm. player personnel, VP type. There's a difference in my book. You can call it general manager in some areas. You can call it player personnel, vice president, whatever. But in terms of actual what that position is for, running the team, making sure the talent is there, making sure that the coach is happy with the town, blah, 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 you know, all that. And the players are happy as well. Get the money they're supposed to get. There is, in my book, no better, no better executive in the history of sports than Jerry West. Let me ask you a question out there. Is it, is he a greater executive than he was as a player? The results were better. Yeah. I think I don't think you can compare the two. It's just too different. He, he was a killer. He was a killer as a player, and I know he didn't. He lost more, a lot more than he won, but it's a team sport. Yeah, it's a team sport, and you, you have to factor that in. He he was winning MVPs and finals. He lost. That's how good Jerry West was. Which, by the way, uh, I still say LeBron James should have won Finals MVP in 2015. I actually have been. Talking about that for weeks after that series, but you're LeBron haters, you know. According, yeah, to I'm a LeBron that. hater, but you know that that's just, supposedly according to our. Right, I, I guess you can't you can't criticize anyone that 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 does something that's suspect uh, if you if you're supposedly like them. I don't I don't get irritated by my sister if she does something dumb. Why? Because now I hate her now because I criticize her. What? I don't love her anymore because she did something wrong. Or if I do something wrong and somebody hits me back up with it? Am I, am I going to go sit in a corner and say, oh, you don't like me anymore? That's that's probably the one big thing about society that cracks me up in this kind of time is you have to you have to pick sides and it has to all be one way. I was going to say some another word, but shut <laughs> up, okay? I can criticize LeBron and I can also pat him on the back as well because that's life. No one's perfect. You say something dumb, I don't care how much I like you, I'm going to tell you you said something dumb. And I would expect somebody else in my life to say the same thing if that happens, if I do that. That's how it's supposed to work. Just because I criticize LeBron doesn't mean I don't like him. He he creates that by saying things that don't make sense sometimes. True. That's that's the reason why. Now, as far as his play, and another thing I, 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 I crack up at uh, is, is the 2016 – finals he led both teams in the finals both teams not just the cleveland team in points rebounds assists blocks and and uh, blocks and steals he led in all five major categories but all oh, kyrie won him the championship on that shot in game seven see stupid stuff like that i i don't like that that is such a stupid moronic comment you can't even say anything about it at that point. Like, how stupid are you? Did you watch the games? Do you do people who who say stupid things actually watch stuff to just say things? Well, yeah, people do just say things to just say things off the top of their head, and it does come off stupid. So, so I, they're I wondering. Even... Well, you know, we've been we've been talking about this last couple of weeks how the Lakers have been playing I haven't really been ranting because there's no reason to rant they're winning yeah why why do you need to when get mad win, there's that means you're doing something right mm-hmm. they might not win the way you want to but that's only when they're like a 60 win team 
and then they don't win. You know, they let the Wizards get close or something like that. But I'm like, eh, whatever. Thank you, Search. Always great to have you here. Uh, have a good one, my friend, and hope to see you back soon. Uh, always great to have Search and Destroy here, the best moderator out there in Lakers chat. It is the Lakers Fast Break. It is Joe Soro along with me, Joe Glassford. Thanks again for watching, listening. Truly appreciate it. But I agree with you on Jerry West. Uh, just an outstanding resume that I that few others can or ever will match. No one will match. You know, Larry Bird won an MVP, Executive of the Year, and Coach of the Year. And, man, he was so close, so close in 98 and beating the Bulls in that Game 7 in Chicago. Man, imagine imagine if he had won that year. Larry, Larry Bird is the other guy. Larry Bird is the other guy that bucked the trend. Great players who became great at other things. Larry Bird again won the MVP, won the MVP as an executive, won the MVP as a coach. You know, that's that I don't think that'll ever happen again. So Jerry West number one, and I gotta give kudos to Larry Bird. Uh and, and though th th those two have kind of a, the same temperament in a lot of ways. When you when you when you look at their careers, they were they were beasts, absolute beasts, and they were great at everything they did. It tells back. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be the death of joe <laughs> three shots in four minutes <laughs> he's looking <laughs> i don't have any alcohol on me right now oh my gosh i drank i drank, I drank three quarters of a wine bottle last night that's not enough for you all was he on last night no, Intel was Intel's been gone for a while. Yeah, I'm sure he's busy doing Intel things. He says he's back again. Uh, so that's up to you, my friend. But uh, <laughs> let me let me let me uh, let me think about it, Intel. Give me about five ten minutes. So while you're thinking that five ten minutes, a couple of interesting things I wanted to add on is uh, the Charlotte Hornets announced that uh, their coach is uh, moving up to the front uh, office, David Brago. So I want to ask you this, uh, the assistants uh, are already being lining, lining up. They're already being lined up to interview to go ahead and possibly become the next Charlotte Hornets coach. The interesting thing I see from the first round of NBA assistants, again, this is not all. I'm sure they're interviewed quite more. None are from the Los Angeles Lakers. Does this surprise you at all, given the fact we are so hard on the coaching staff as a whole? Man, Charlotte, geez. I feel so bad for that organization in a lot of ways. Uh, they were one pick away from getting Wenbanyamba, and that would have changed everything for him. Mm -hmm. And I actually would have preferred them for him to go there. I don't I actually think the Spurs are on the downside here very soon. I think they're gonna start hitting the wall a little bit more. Wen is a good player, but I think Pop is two, three years past where he should be. Mm -hmm. I think he should have retired two, three years ago. And I don't know how much help they're gonna get this year in the draft. But as far as Charlotte's concerned, I, I don't know. Uh, they're going to have to address this LaMelo thing, I think, before they do anything else. There, that, there's, that, there's a problem there. I don't know if he's going to be able to stay healthy and they've already given him the money. I don't know. Brandon Miller, when, you, when, you, when, I, when I talk about the, the losing, like how are, you're going to have to get a, a Will Hardy-type uh, coach in there if you want, if you want to win. And can then find, can be found on the Lakers. Apparently. Yeah. Can you find can you find someone like a Will Hardy? Not nowhere in LA. No, no, absolutely not. Uh no one in LA right now is a coach, really. Uh Darvin Ham has been playing it playing it cool this last few weeks. They're winning. He hasn't messed anything up. Uh but I don't know where he could mess it up really. You, you have five starters that are that are effective and that's it you don't have anything else to do 
Uh, we'll find out more should the Lakers make it to the playoffs. But uh, I don't know what the I don't know what these organizations can do at this point, especially when they don't have the player that can change the personality. Brandon Miller's a good player. I don't know if he can change the personality there. I don't know if Lamelo Ball is some some with those guys' diets and, and training regiments. The, their clown of a dad came out and started. Blaming. I'm still saying it's not out of the realm of possibility, Joe, that Lamelo Ball could be on the move or no, he, he, he could be on the move, and I, I don't want him anywhere in LA though. Okay. I think one one ball player was enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just don't want to deal with. I never like I. I after about a year or so, I realized there's this, you could just see the, the deterioration in the focus of the game. Uh, Lonzo Ball is a team player. He's, he's, he's got that like ability to, to, to understand the game, but you have to be present. You have to really be present. And I thought you start hearing how he got somebody knocked up and then all of a sudden he's getting tattoos and I'm like, is this guy really focused on the game or is he, and his, I heard his diet was trash. He's falling apart health wise. And like, what, what is this? Like what did these guys got here? They got their money and now they're done. So I, I just, it doesn't matter. I don't really care about that part of the thing, but I don't know. I don't know what the hell I, I, I don't think the Charlotte Hornets, Bobcats, whatever the hell they call themselves, I don't, I don't think they should have ever had a second team over there. Frank, BBB only is still as exists with shoe collectors. And uh, I think I, we'll just leave it at that because, you know, the sneaker heads still, they collect everything and includes the BBBs, I think. Uh, they may become very valuable at some and point. He's, you know, and LeVar Ball is such a moron. He blamed bands on why LaMelo got hurt. And the Pumas, according to Pumas, yeah. yeah. It's it, you know the, the the people who who deflect their 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 own faults onto something else. Those are the first. Those are the first of the real narcissists. So if you see a BBB set at a garage sale, just sitting there for five bucks, I'd buy them just in I case. I don't think the shoes ruin anybody, guys. I think I think, guys. Uh, NBA players in the past with one one hundredth of the medical advantages and nutritionists and, and and recovery agents, all that stuff. These guys were playing in Chuck Taylor's for God's sakes for decades. And a lot of those guys had 14, 15 year careers. OK, there's some genetics involved here. I'm not going to say that, that it's not genetics, but there's also what you put in your body. Uh, Kobe used to talk about it. He used to eat everything and anything until he finally figured out, wait, I keep getting these knickknack injuries. Well, maybe I need to start eating my, you know, take care of my body a little better and fueling it the right way. Uh, I remember watching uh, Lonzo for a short amount of time on one of his lame uh, uh, reality shows. That was really the first sign that I thought was really bad. I, reality show while the game is going on. I'm not a big fan of that kind of stuff. Uh, hell, Kobe didn't do he got game because it, it, it got in the way of his training. To me, that, that's the kind of guy I, I want to be around and watch. He, they were eating trash. So bad diet, bad jeans, bad shoes all together with a, uh, a dipshit leader behind them. There you go. But they got their money. I guess that was the goal, right? They got their money. Peace out. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your money. Uh, the, the Ball family had a small little Haley's Comet moment. Now to me... You know, as far as Lamelo is concerned, I don't see him. I don't see a 10, 12 year career where he's playing as good as he is. I'm just looking at it right now on one of my other tabs as far as the value. Uh, I, and uh, it did give me a street value now, but earlier this decade, like 2021, they were still trying to attach themselves with uh, companies like Adidas and others that were valued as much as 900 bucks from what I was seeing. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. So, you never know. For sneakerheads, 10 years down the line, they might be valuable, but just wanted to let everybody know. But uh, wanted to go ahead and before Joe decides about any shots, uh, I do want to mention Hernan was asking you how much, what's the most wine you've drank or how much wine do you think you could drink? 
in a given. I could city. drink a lot, and I'm not a drinker. I could drink a lot. I'm a big guy, and my mindset's pretty good. And when I'm drunk, I'm uh, I, I relax uh, more. Like my dad, God rest his soul, he, he would be more funny than than ups than angry. I don't get angry when I when I drink. I don't get all. I do get strong. I, I will say that, but I don't. I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any gear where I go towards anger when I when I'm drinking. I've never been. An, I've never been angry when I've been drunk. The Frank's thing to prove it. I can do a lot more push-ups when I'm drunk than when I'm not. That's that's the pain receptors are are lessened when I'm drunk. Okay. All right. But yeah, I don't. I don't believe I, it's a. It, it kind of. It's a weakness thing for me. I feel like those who do that stuff, it's uh, they're weak. I like to be strong-minded. Sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes you drink so much, you're just like, I'm, I got to go put my head down and sleep. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I, I can handle a good amount of alcohol. And oh. Expect, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, I just wanted to say that, uh, yeah, Kurt, you're right. Uh, after the reports had only Jerry West... And also as well, uh, Vince Carter and Chauncey Billups, the guys elected to the Hall of Fame. Another name has been added, and you'll like this. And Kurt is right on that. According to Magic Johnson, Michael Cooper is going to be elected into the Hall of Fame. So you're Wait, what happened? Michael Cooper looks like he's going to be elected to the Hall of Fame, according to Magic Johnson on his Instagram. Well, it looks like there's another jersey going up in the rafters. Yeah. I'm going to pull it. Well, actually, all I've got is just the article on it. So not the IG. I, I, IG doesn't come across well on my. So let me see if I can still bring it up. But yeah, it looks like uh, I'll give it a shot. Let me see if I can. But um, it is Michael Cooper. Uh, very well deserved. Uh, so glad and so happy for him that he uh, does get elected to the Hall of Fame. Uh, Joe, your thoughts on Michael Cooper? I mean, just outstanding as far as what he brought to those Showtime teams. Is that a serious question? Oh, just asking your thoughts. If you want to just touch it off for for Michael, what what Michael meant to that, that those Showtime teams? Yeah, I'm bringing it up now as far as the article. So, what's the comparison? He is. I didn't think Instagram came up good, but I think actually this does. So. It's hard to it's it's hard to. Michael Cooper was a defensive player of the year in 1987. Because you can say, oh, he was the Robert Ory. He could you could say he was the Rick Fox. You could say he was the Lamar Odom of the Lakers. I actually think he was more than that. He wasn't. He was. He was the X factor. He is the X factor in any championship team. Because you put him on. Imagine this, guys. Imagine you have Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and James Worthy, all Hall of Famers, all all-time greats, all finals MVPs. And then you had Michael Cooper as the fourth guy, let's say who you could sick on Larry Bird, Alex English, Joe Dumars, Isaiah Thomas, whomever. And not only was he good, he was winning Defensive Player of the Year awards with MVPs on this team. Michael Cooper, I don't like to say he deserves, someone deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Because it just it goes away from what I believe with the Hall of Fame. Either you are a Hall of Fame or you're not. Uh, but but I'm 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 just elated that he's getting his his due. He deserves it. He's a Hall of Famer now, and we get to see twenty one now up in the rafters, and no one's going to wear it again. Sorry, Maxwell Lewis. <laughs> First of all, you're not very good. 
as of now, maybe you'll get better. Uh, and then not only that, you're, you not only did he have a wasted rookie season, but he'll get his jersey. He's going to have to switch. So we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, Magic Johnson, I'm going to go ahead and read it because uh, I'm not sure it's clear for everybody out there. I tried to zoom in on it, but didn't come out clearly. Magic says, I don't even know where to start. I tried to wait until Saturday, but I just can't hold back the news. I'm so thrilled that my Showtime running mate and one of my best friends, Michael Cooper, has been elected to the Naismith Baseball Basketball Hall of Fame. Coop is the greatest defensive player I've ever seen in the NBA. And I would know because I went up against him every day in practice. His play on the offensive end was strong too. He was an excellent point guard and three-point shooting threat. A lot of people may not know that he once held the record for the most three-pointers in an NBA Finals game with six before Steph Curry came along. He was mentally and physically tough, which made him such an amazing teammate. And I can't forget about our special alley-oops, the Koopa Loop. I love throwing him those high lobs, which always sent the forum into a frenzy. I'm so happy for Michael, his wife Yvonne, and his kids for this well-deserved honor. And Laker Nation should be ecstatic as well. Cookie and I can't wait to support Coop at the Hall of Fame ceremony in August. So there you go. So the Lakers had four Hall of Famers in the same starting lineup. That's pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. So they have Michael Cooper. They have Jamal Wilkes, Bob McAdoo, Kareem Magic, Worthy. Just stacked to the till, right? I mean, I know Bob McAdoo was the kind of late in his career. Jamal came from another team. So you, you can't really say that they're homegrown types. But then again, even Kareem was but Who built this team, but a Hall of Famer himself. How can you How can you not, you know, what it, uh, Darren said it best. He the, Part of the greatest dynasty in NBA history. Boston Celtics will laugh at that and say, uh, no. But I'd like to think that if if this Laker team was in the fifth was set in the 50s and 60s, I think they would have probably won 11 of 13 as well. Uh, this was the most competitive era in the NBA. Uh, there, and I don't think anyone can argue that. This was the most competitive era of basketball because there weren't as many teams at that time. You were talking about four less teams. Four less teams means 60 less players. 60 less players might not sound like a lot if you're watching the NFL, baseball, but it does matter in, in, in basketball. That's 60 players now that you disperse to 26 other teams. And one of those players is going to be a very, very, very good player in a lot of ways, probably at all, an all-star uh, for each team, maybe even two. So it does matter when you're when you're spread out that that wide. And it's 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 unfortunate because I think this way, but imagine if they had won seven in that decade. Imagine if they'd won in 84 and 89. I, I think about that even though I wasn't in it as much at that time. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 but it was a, it was a, it was a great run that the eighties with all those teams was a great run. It was what brought the NBA to its prominence and it's continued since. And Michael had a lot to do with that. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Sorrell along with me, Cheryl Glassford. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Uh, Joe, you are saved by the bell because Intel Wild has gone to bed. So no need to take the shots right now. He said for another time, perhaps then. So let him know. Uh, and he'll uh, said he'll go and do that only if you wish. But once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Sorrell along with me, Gerald Glassford. Don't forget Saturday afternoon. It's an afternoon game, everyone. 12.30 p.m. Pacific time as the Lakers face off against the Cleveland Cavaliers. But we'll still be scoreboard watching tomorrow night, Joe. And uh, we'll still be looking at what the standings will be. So tomorrow is a very important evening for the Lakers as well. And they're not even playing, Joe. Good. It's a bit nice to kind of... Rest a little. It's going to be a rainy day tomorrow in Southern California again. 
let the let the let the boys get some rest here off of a really really rigorous six game road trip and go in the Saturday afternoon and let's let's start the the next winning streak here. This is going to be a really important one. The next five. I agree, absolutely. Uh, Tyrone says Kings play the Celtics. Yep, we laid it all out, Tyrone, earlier in the show. We laid out the the schedule for all the teams in the playoff mix from four to 10 in the Western conference and what their final five to six games are. We lay it all out. We, at least I share my thoughts on, on what the other teams might do and what the Lakers might do as well at the Lakers go five and one or six and oh, or excuse me, they can only go five and one, five and oh, or they can go four and one. If they go four and one or five and oh, who knows what the Lakers can actually do to, get up higher in the Western conference, but they better make sure they keep winning because golden state has won six in a row and they're right behind them. So very interesting. The plot thickens. We'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> Kenrick. Thanks, Joe. What about me, Kenrick? I'm on the show too. Jeez. Louise. My gosh. It's like, I'm a, well, never mind. I won't even go elaborate on it. Cause I'll just set you up for another one of your jokes. So never mind. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. But once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Gerald Glassford. Gerald yeah, Glassford. The 08, the 08, the 08 game four was a was a gut punch. Up 24, up 20 in the third quarter. I don't know how the hell that game went the way it did. That was, that was bad. I called you a genius too, Kurt. That's not very nice. I called you a genius on worldwide internet and that's how you treat me i see how it is okay i see how it is guys <laughs> gerald needs the affirmation it's, that doesn't it's matter what, no he just, lives okay for it. that's all right it's whatever he lives for it. Give, give him his flowers so he doesn't oh, warm milk is terrible darren oh warm milk is terrible my god warm milk no <laughs> Kiss my ass. It. I've always had cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you're Randy Poffo. Oh, right? That's brutal, Kurt. Uh, you're Randy Poffo. You're the genius. I called you the genius, Kurt. I already put Actually, that down for you. <laughs> I already called you that the other day. Don't don't take my don't take my joke, Kurt. I already well, gave technically that Randy Poffo is the macho man. He's, you're thinking Lanny yes. Poffle. Yes, uh, Lanny Poffle, yes. Lanny Poffle, Randy Poffle. So he, he was actually complimenting you, and you couldn't even take that. Yeah, well, that's true. I blew it on that one. But, yes, Randy Poffo is – well, he, are you talking about Randy Poffo, the St. Louis catcher that did become the Macho Man? Well, there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, just, think, just think if his career had blossomed beyond the minor mm -hmm. league baseball catcher. Yeah, that I think that's what he meant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Okay, well – it is, of course, the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Sorrow, along with me, Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much for watching this thing. Now you got me thinking, Kurt, about uh, jumping Joel Savoldi, just Joe Savoldi, the old ICW from that the area in Kentucky and Tennessee in those days where the Poffos were battling each other. Because that was those were sons, the Poffo sons, and uh, they were the, you know he had nobody else in his. Uh, whole federation that could actually were good. So he had to have the brothers face off against each other the whole time before they finally decided to cash in and go to the WWF. And you all know the story from there. But once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Soro along with me, Gerald Glassford. Uh, yes, Kenrick, we do need the sixth seed. We need to get higher than we are now. Playing two games in a play-in is tough. Reminds me of that show, Heels. Yes, that's a good point, Kurt. That it does. That it does. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. We'll be on Saturday afternoon. I don't know if we'll have a show tomorrow night. We'll wait and see. But I know Friday nights are usually busy for both Joe and I, but we'll see. It is Saturday, though, 12.30 p.m. Pacific, the Lakers and Cleveland. We will be here on playback. So, uh, Kenrick, oh, man, that's. Will you be rooting for Boston tomorrow, Joe, like Kenrick is? That's so hard for me to do. That is just so hard for me. I understand who they're playing. They're playing against Sacramento. At this point, there's no choice. We need Sacramento to lose. Yeah, that's true. 
You don't have to cheer for Boston. Just hope that the Kings lose. There you go. That's, that's That makes me feel better. I think I'll go ahead and do that. Yes. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. I think that's the best way you could word it. Is you want the, the Kings to lose. You don't care about the Celtics. Yeah, Kurt, absolutely. We can cheer for both of them to lose. Yeah, but that's not realistic. But we can cheer for them to lose a chance at the title. No, I, that, that's obvious. Uh, I'd rather have the Kings win a title than the Celtics. Yes. I'd rather have anyone outside the Celtics win a title, that's for sure. But once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Sorrow along with me, Joe Glassford. Thanks so much again for watching and listening. Will Joe and an upcoming show do three shots in four minutes? That's uh, I'm sure Probably. Between, between you and Intel. That's all goes up to you guys. But uh, thanks again for watching and listening. It is me, Joe Glassford, and Joe Sorrow. He is Ox1947 at LakersBall.com. Oh, one last thing I did remember. At report underscore court, Stone Hansen. Guess what, Joe? The guy that said he was in retirement, our good friend, Stone Hansen, Mr. Stone Hansen himself, he is back in business. He's been yes. – look. it's like a pro wrestler, the theme with WrestleMania and all that. Just they when just, I thought he was out, he pulled him back in. Yep, he's reviewing videos once again. He is analyzing and, and looking up players. So please support Stone Hansen, our good friend at report underscore court. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, it's just hard, Kurt. He, he's something he's done for so much of his life and to get fully away from it. He tried to go cold turkey and yeah, it's, he's getting back into it little by little. So maybe we can go ahead on bring him on the show to do a little bit more evaluations. He's been very hesitant, Joe, to do evaluations on players. But now that he's starting to look at video once again, <laughs> we'll get him back on the show indeed. But it is Joe Sorrow along with me, Joe Glassford. Thanks again. Please support Stone Hansen. Please support all of our good friends, John Costa, the Laker Holics crew, Empire Jeff TV, Lakers in Five, Daniel Berry Sports Highlights, all the great people that are out there. Recent birthday for John McKinley, and so happy birthday to him. But it is the Lakers fast break. We'll be on. Saturday afternoon at the very least. Coming right back at you. Will we have a show tomorrow night? We're not sure, but lots of action to stay tuned to. And we'll make sure we give you the updates always right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. <laughs>